Saints of God, welcome to Sabbath School Devotion. My name, Edwin Estime. Waiting is painful by definition. One of the Hebrew words for patience can be translated to be much pain, to shake, to tremble, to be wounded, to be sorrowful. Patience, in essence, hurt. Learning patience is not easy, and sometimes it is the very essence of what it means to be in the crucible. Now, I'm going to take some time to kind of recap what we discussed the last couple of days before getting to my new point of today. But first, let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for all that you have blessed us with. Now, Lord, teach us to be patient. Teach us what it means to wait on you. In Jesus we pray. Amen. So far, for the past several weeks, we have talked about being in the crucible, um, suffering and trials. Now, when I think about suffering and trials, I may think about like acute pain. Pain that is from an external force, such as loss of a loved one, betrayal from a friend or a family member, loss of income or a job, or anything that can cause a deep emotional wound. Now, what happens when the trial or the nature of the struggle is really just waiting? Just delayed gratification, delayed satisfaction, delayed resolution to any problem. Overall, it seems to linger for a long time. That is by its nature. It's it's a troubling, it's a trial, it's it's a crucible. E.J. Wagner once said that if you take the noun of patient, like the patient at the hospital or at, at the doctor's office, the patient at the hospital is someone who is suffering. They are a sufferer. They are in a doctor's office because they are in pain. So patience is always in the context of conflict and suffering. Patience is always in the context of of trials, of, of struggle. Earlier this week, I gave the example of how my daughter had to practice patience when it came time to eating dessert only on the weekends. We also um, talked about how the rise of, of technology allows our lives to become quicker, allow things to be more convenient, and it seems to make us humans less and less patient. You know, I could remember probably between 10 to 20 years ago, when you're watching a TV series, you have to wait to see a new episode to come out at least once a week. You know, I can remember, you know, a new episode of whatever, you know, you're watching will only drop, you know, every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Now, modern streaming services will drop the whole entire season in one moment, allowing you to watch the whole series at your pace and at your leisure. Now, due to excitement and probably a little bit of impatience, People will spend a short amount of time watching a particular series. And this is where the term binge watching came from. I've once read in an article that stated that it is believed that one of the main matrices that Netflix uses to measure how successful one of its original programs are, are how many people binge watches it. So Netflix uses the human nature of impatience to measure how successful its original shows are. Now, patience only reveals itself during a test or during a trial. You're not showing patience if you're shopping at Amazon with Amazon Prime and manage to get your package within the same day that you ordered it. Now, you are not showing patience is if whatever you ask for, whatever you wanted, whatever the case is, and you, you are instantly gratified. Patience, as described in Romans 5 verse 5, is only manifested in tribulations. It's only manifested in trials. So if you are at work or you at school and someone says something to you disrespectfully, it is at this point you are tested with 
patience. Now, in Psalms 37, verse 7, David writes, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Now, here's another aspect of patience, and it's all about waiting on God to call the next move. Our impatience may cause us to commit irrational acts, especially when we have undeniable evidence of his will. Now, remember, patience only appears during a trial, during a time of crucible. So while we are in this crucible, we may be overwhelmed by feelings of anger, feelings of fear, feelings of passion, or even of feelings of, of justice. For example, Elijah. After the showdown on top of Mount Carmel, the people acknowledge who is the true God. And all the false prophets were put to death. Now, after something like that, what happened with Elijah and the fire coming down from heaven, you would have thought that, you know, his faith would have been strengthened and the sense of God's protection would have grown exponentially. But when he heard of the threat of Queen Jezebel, instead of waiting on God, Instead of being patient with God to tell him what to do next, Elijah, overcame by fear, ran away to the point where an angel of God found Elijah in the wilderness and asked him, Elijah, what are you doing here? Here's another example. King Saul. Now, during this time, before Israel goes into any battle, the priests always made burnt offerings and peace offerings to God. In, in order to gain protection, make sure they win. So when the Philistines gather all their forces to fight against Israel, when they were ready to start the sacrificial services, Samuel told Saul to wait for him for seven days before he officiates the service. Now, Saul waited the seven days. But when he didn't see Samuel, he decided that he was going to do himself. Now, the crazy thing is, Samuel came just a couple of hours later. The act of impatience cost him his whole entire kingdom. Brothers and sisters, it is easy to let things like ambition, anger, passion, lack of faith, or even supposed zeal for the Lord to cause us to rush ahead to do things that we're not supposed to do or be in places where we're not supposed to be. And honestly, no one is immune to this type of danger. But the key is to cultivate a trusting faith in the goodness and mercy of God who we know loves us and wants what's best for us. We need to learn to be still before God and wait patiently for Him. Saints of God, keep the faith.